Hello to next tutorial by Sean McMillan. This is a tutorial that is going to show you guys how to build perfect speech bubbles for your comic strips. Okay, so first of all, as you can see, I've already got some art in here. So I drew all this into Photoshop, and as you can see, I already have my layout done. So go ahead and take a look at my folders. I typically do all my sketches and stuff in this layer. In a, I keep everything in folders. So you can see in my drawings folder, it has all my thumbnails so that I can move each one around. But that's another, that's for another tutorial, okay? So I'm going to turn that off, and then I have my layout, which I'm going to turn on. And maybe in another tutorial, I'll go over how I do these uh, masking boxes and stuff. But some of the stuff that I use for that, we will be going over in this tutorial. So first of all, first thing I usually like to do is make a new folder. I'm going to call this dialogue. Now I'm going to grab my text tool. Pretty obvious stuff. Just going to type in my text. But the important thing to see here is I don't just click and start typing. I click and drag, which is important because then I can change the shape that my words fit into. Okay. So I'm going to type this in. And I believe the first words he says is, what are you doing? Okay, so now I'm just going to let that be. So I have my dialog folder and this layer inside here saying, what are you doing? Okay, now the way that I get my speech balloons is I like to use the paths tool. You could use your selections, but I don't like to use selections because they're too hard to uh, adjust later on. Whereas paths, uh, there's, there's many benefits to using paths. So I'm going to grab a ellipse tool. And it's all a matter of preference, but for me, I personally, I like to use perfect circles and then just squash them a little bit. So I'm going to hold down the shift key so I get my perfect circle. And as you can see, it fills it whatever, with whatever front color you have. Uh, I like to fill mine with white, not black. So what I'm going to do is that color, the fill color, is right here in my layers. So I'm just going to double click that and change that to white. And I'm going to put this behind the text. So now I can click that, move that around. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make, I'm going to cl double click on my the T in my text layer. And I'm going to adjust this so that it fits. So if I click this layer, I can see where that circle is. And now what I'm going to do, so I'm going to hit Control T or edit transform and I'm going to make that a little smaller and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the path so I have this path selected see how you get a little white and black square around the shape and I'm going to grab this tool the pen tool and now when I hold the shift button it should allow me to add to the shape so I'm just going to add a little triangle to it And this is a very important tool here. You have your select path selection tool. So I'm going to grab this. As you can see, it made two different shapes. But I don't want that. I want them to be just one shape. So I'm going to grab this, select it, control X, hit OK. And now I'm going to hit control V and just paste that. Oh, wait. Select your path and then hit control V. And now they're both combined. See this? So I can grab both of those, and that's right. I want now these four squares up here. These are very important. Since I have two paths combined, I want to make sure that they're going to combine to one shape. So you see, you have your different path combinations here. And now it's this shape is filled with white. Now the next step, very important. I want to go to layer, layer style, and stroke. Now layer style, if you don't know about layer style, then I don't know, you're behind. Layer style is great. This allows you to combine multiple different effects onto your layer, and they're all adjustable, and you can you get all these nice little parameters and settings. It's really great. So I'm just going to choose a black stroke. I can adjust the thickness of that stroke. Right? I typically just go with a 3 or 2. Uh, I like to do inside so that I get sharper corners. 
And person me person, I like to do a drop shadow as well. And so my drop shadows, I don't like them to have any blur, so I make them really small in size. And then I make the distance about, uh, I think about 5 should be fine. And I usually change this to 50. I don't want it to be too dark. It's a very subtle effect. So now if I just click another layer, as you can see, let's zoom in a little closer, I have a perfect stroke, a perfect shape, and a little bit of a drop shadow. Let me show you what that drop shadow does. I can actually make it a little bigger so you can see it better. So you see how that works? And I like to add it to my text as well. So I can go click on my text. And what I could do is I could go to layer, layer style, and do all of these effects all over again. Or, this is really nifty, I can hold the Alt key, click on effects, and drag it to the other layer. See that? Now the text has the same effect that the bubble has. And basically I just need to go in and do that for all the rest of my shapes. So what I usually do is I make a perfect circle with a triangle. And then what I do is hit Control T and I just squash it a little bit. Make it kind of fit around that text a little better. And if you hit Control H, it'll get rid of that selection. You know how you can see the path. So Control H, very helpful shortcut key. And that's pretty much it. I'm going to just lighten up the drop shadow on my text. Okay. Now, the problem is when you get when you do this for every single panel and every panel has two or three balloons, it gets to be a lot of layers and then you want to kind of move your balloons around, make them fit around each other. So what I typically do, again, you have to be work very organized because Photoshop just has so many layers. I'm going to have my dialog folder, and then I'm going to have my text balloon, or my text and the, the balloon. I'm just going to shift click both of these layers, so I have both of them. And I'm going to drag that into the new layer button and name that, what are you doing? And the purpose for this is now I can click the folder and move all of it together. See that? So I actually already, I already have all my text and balloons done. I'm just going to turn that new layer off. See this old dialog? This actually has all of them done already. And as you can see, if I open up that folder, it has a folder for each word balloon. And then within, so for instance, if I go to mark my words, that would be the last one. Mark my words. I can click on this. I can move around the whole thing, or I can open up that layer and move each one individually. So as you can see, it turns into a lot of layers. You know, if I have every single one of these drop down open with all the effects and everything, it turns into quite a bit. Okay, so that's pretty much how you get Photoshop to do all your work for you. If you guys have any questions, just email me at Sean, S-H-A-U-N, D McMillan at gmail.com. And feel free to take a look at my webcomic at www.grieferglory.com.